What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking about taking advice. And, and the reason that I'm talking about this is because I've gotten advice from quite a bit of people. And what I realized is that there's a difference <laughs> between person A and person B. And it's really important to get outside opinions, to get, you know, wise counsel and really hear from other people's perspectives when moving forth with challenging decisions. But sometimes we decide to take the advice of people for the wrong reasons. It might just be that they're our parents, our best friend, someone that we think cares about us, or someone that we think has just lived enough life to know the answer to your issues. But truthfully, those are some weak, those are some pretty weak reasons, to be quite honest with you. But not to fret. I have a solution. If you keep watching this video, I'll let you know all the wrong people and especially the right people to ask advice from. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, just keep watching. So again, coming from a personal perspective, be careful who you listen to. Be very careful who you listen to. I have taken some bad advice from some seemingly good people. I'm not going to say they're bad people, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I've taken some advice from people who I shouldn't have in those particular areas and sometimes overall at all and there are three situations where I feel like it's especially not a good idea to take advice from a person and this is for one the first two are pertaining to like in that specific area of the issue that you're dealing with the third one is just period overall Sorry, I was just eating some Boom Chicka Pop popcorn. It's the best popcorn, but I think I got some kernels stuck in my teeth. I don't listen to these three types of people. Broken people in that area, okay? This is someone who's in pain. They are hurting. They have dark minds. They have got a clouded lens and perspective on the situation. Major unhealed trauma in the area of your concern. One type of person you shouldn't ask. The second, ignorant people. Gotta keep it real. Some of y'all dumb. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> kind of. But the weird thing about this is it usually, it comes with a sense of arrogance. So they have this false confidence. Most people who are ignorant in a situation, they're just going to be like, oh, I don't know nothing about that. I'm not going to tell you any advice on that because I don't know nothing about that. These ignorant people, they're going to speak on something they know nothing about. As soon as you ask them a question, they just open their mouth and just start blabbing on about nonsense literally that's what it is because they don't actually know anything but unfortunately they think they know more than they do like something about them like they believe that what they're saying is true even though they don't have anything to back it up and the third type which is whether you're talking about a specific area or just in general no matter what this is a person that you should not listen to and this is a jealous person so this is someone who is inherently competitive they would rather compare themselves to you than to support you. And they only want you to do but so well. You can do like as well as them almost, but definitely can't do better than them. So they're not gonna help you more than they think you deserve to be helped because they don't want you to be doing better than them. They don't want you to be at their level even. They wanna like, if this is your friend, this is like the friend that wants to be the leader of the group. <laughs> I guess that's the best way I can describe it. Okay, now that I'm done throwing shade, let's go ahead and talk about the right type of person to take advice from. And just going off of that, I do want to say that a lot of people are going to assume it's someone who's experienced or it's someone who is older and, you know, like more mature or whatever. But I really want to make it clear that this is not something that comes with age. This is not something that automatically comes with experience. Experience can support it, but that's not an instantaneous, like if they have experience, they're definitely gonna be a good person to take advice from. And that's because their experience may have led them to become broken. So I'm gonna go a little bit more into depth with all those, um, all those specific types and how you can identify them. Because within the area of concern, a broken person, I'm sorry, the lighting, <laughs> Obviously I'm using window lighting, so it's just gonna look like the leaves and trees outside of my window and the window panels. But when it comes to a broken person, every mention of that specific area of concern, they have kind of a pessimistic mindset around it. They're bitter about it, they have resentment, or they just have like a really negative perspective around it. And if it's not that, they're really, really obsessive over it. Meaning 
they can't stop thinking about it because they can't come to a conclusion. They're very confused about it. So if you're broken about something, confusion doesn't come from a state of peace. It comes from a state of turmoil and chaos. And if you're not at a peaceful place, even if it's a negative thing, you know, the conclusion is negative or the conclusion is not ideal, someone who's not broken in that area would still be able to talk about it and come to terms with it in a peaceful manner. Someone who's broken, they're gonna be really pessimistic, negative, upset about it when they talk about it. Now the ignorant advisors, they don't know nothing about this. <laughs> like, like I said, they've never gone through it, they've never seen anything about it, heard about it, been about it, <laughs> none of it, none, nothing. And on top of that, they gain their wisdom from like the totally wrong places. Like, you know those people who like everything they say that's advice is something they retweeted on Twitter three weeks ago. It's like everything that they learn is just from social media or like Kevin Samuels. <laughs> okay, let me stop. I've, I've never watched one of his videos, so I don't really know, <laughs> but I just had to say that. They just, they just basically get their wisdom from people who are also ignorant or people who are broken. So just take that with a grain of salt. And the envious advisors. Now you're gonna, I can make a whole video series about this. So I'm telling you, I got so much information about envy and jealousy, but I'm gonna try to keep it concise for this specific video. How you can tell someone is jealous of you or jealous in general, how you can tell someone is envious of you, and there are levels, like jealousy is here, envy is like further above, but it all roots with like, you see these kind of characteristics. They would maybe sneakily pick at your insecurities just to see how you respond to her, or just to kind of, I don't know, knock you out of character, or maybe they just want to see how insecure you are about this thing. They might even pretend to have the same insecurity to see if you feel that way about your perceived flaws. They have very unusual responses to your successes and failures. I hear a lot of people always say like, oh, if you're doing well, they'll not be happy for you. If you're doing poorly, you know, they'll act happy about it. And that is true sometimes, but other times they know not to do that <laughs> because they really want to be sneaky about it. So I think that that's when it comes up to the level of envy, right? So if someone is jealous, they're going to be like, oh man, I wanted that. Or they're going to be like, how did you, or, you know, they might not really have the type of joy and encourage, encouraging like support that you would expect a friend or a loved one to come with your success. But when it comes to someone who is envious, they might actually gas you. They'll act like way happier for you than anyone else. You are the best at this, oh my God. And they'll start telling everybody, look how good she did. Look at, wow, how beautiful. Look at my friend, this is my best friend. Like, they'll act very, 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 very weirdly supportive to the point where it's like, are you a fan or a friend? You know, like, do you love me or, or do you want me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like they push it so far that it's like, this can't be real. And when it comes to your failures, they, they might either mock you or like, you know, sometimes they wanna joke about it not necessarily while you're finding out about it, but they'll bring it up in like a mocking kind of joking manner. <laughs> Girl, not again, like that kind of thing. Or they will be really at peace around you when you're in those situations. Like they'll like to be around you, especially. This is the friend that spends more time with you when you're in a low place, but when you seem to be doing well, then they don't really wanna be around anymore. Yeah, that is a jealous friend. When they're envious, they're definitely more likely to mock you. They're definitely more likely to just poke at you about it. And the other thing about jealous or envious people is that they, it's really weird. It'll be like every time you say something about yourself, they'll be like, ooh, not me, I would never, or like, uh, I like it this way instead, or I think my way is better. But then at the same time, you see them turn around and copy you and do a lot of things that you do. So it's almost like they want to deflect from the fact that they like to be like you or want to be like you by pretending like they're so different from you. But then they turn around and copy and do the exact same thing that you be doing. So, okay, so that's, that's the heavy stuff. Got that out the way. Let's talk about the good advisors. Let's talk about the wise counsel that we really truly need. These people come with knowledge and they come with a clean heart. 
These are two critical, critical, critical components to wisdom because you can have information in your head all you want, but if you have toxicity in your heart, an unhealed heart, it's never gonna come out in a way that actually benefits a person. So for example, let's, let's take these two examples, one that has knowledge without a clean heart and one that has a clean heart without knowledge. Um, so knowledge without a clean heart would kind of be like the angry old lady, <laughs> you know? Dang, I'm sorry, I don't like to stereotype, but let's let's keep it real. Like they're very common out in these streets, these angry old women, right? So if you ask an angry old lady for advice, she's gonna give you advice that comes from a place of knowledge and brokenness. Assuming that the area of advice you're requesting is like her broken area and her knowledgeable area, right? But she's older, so obviously she like has to know some things. She would give you some really cold-hearted advice that's backed on like logic and her experiences and things that have truly happened in history and whatever. And you'll hear it and you'll be like, okay, I get why that's valid, but that's kind of messed up. Like, I don't think that's what I want to do. Something feels off about this. And then on the other hand, someone who is ignorant, doesn't have no type of knowledge, but they have a clean heart. It's a child, like a, ask a five-year-old for some advice. And they don't know much of anything. You could ask them advice for the deepest issue and they would give you some advice. They would give, as long as the child is not, has not experienced trauma yet, let's keep that clear because sometimes it happens young, but they would probably give you some type of advice that's coming from a very clean hearted perspective. And you'd be like, wow, that's so sweet. And I love that. But that's not really the whole picture. You're not, there's no knowledge <laughs> surrounding this. It's not supported by any grounding information. So that's why it's really important to have both. You don't wanna have ignorance. You don't wanna have brokenness in the person you're asking advice from in that area. You want them to have knowledge and you want them to have a clean heart. So what does that look like? For one, understanding. Having an understanding of the situation at hand doesn't have to mean they've experienced it, it just has to mean that they've gained enough information. Yes, they have facts, they have knowledge, they have perspective on this specific type of situation. Next, we have humility. And humility is such a deep, meaningful word. I don't think it could really be unpacked as easily as it's like tossed around, but it's so critical. And one, having a bigger picture perspective, expanding the mind beyond this current moment, and also recognizing that we are not entitled to anything, no one's better than anyone. We all can possibly make mistakes in any situation, and there has to be a consideration of the other person. So that brings me into the third piece, which is compassion. A good advisor is compassionate. A good advisor is compassionate. And I know this is not what you would usually hear someone say about advisors because people are usually looking for like an unbiased kind of thing, but compassion is the only way to really be unbiased because it has a softness in the heart and an openness in the heart towards every party. And so when people are using the logic of, well, this person did something wrong, or this was the rules, this is what was supposed to happen. In other words, when people are focusing on being right rather than being righteous, that takes a bias into the situation. So an unbiased perspective is one that brings in compassion on top of the facts, on top of the information, and on top of the just humble approach. So you might be wondering, well, how am I supposed to like find out, how am I supposed to find out that this person isn't ignorant? How would I possibly know that this person's broken or not? How do I know if this person is humble or you know any of those things? Well, for one, it can't be a stranger. <laughs> you wanna make sure that you're taking your time to get to know this person on a deeper level before you start asking advice from them. I have a list of questions that you can use to ask yourself while you're trying to figure out who you wanna to trust to ask advice from. And hopefully this will be a little bit helpful for you. The first type of question is, how do they handle issues in their lives, in their own lives? Do they have a moral compass? Are they weighing their decisions against their own morals and beliefs? Do they have morals that align with yours? Do they seek and gain wisdom from good places? Do they have their own advisors? Do they have good people around them? Do they read the Bible? That's my biased perspective. 
I don't ask advice from people unless that's okay. <laughs> I hardly would ever ask advice from anyone who does not read the Bible because that's where I believe wisdom lives. That's me. You do you. Next would be how did they learn about this? How did this person learn about my issue and the situation surrounding my issue? Do they have relevant experience? Did they go through this? Did they meet someone who went through this? Do they read about this? You know, do they have some kind of applicable perspective? And then lastly, what do they think and feel about you? Do they even like you? Really figure out if this person actually likes you. And if someone makes you feel like they're your fan, they don't actually like you. They just like what they can gain from you. And I just really want to make that clear. That's part of this envy and jealousy thing. And then they might like you, but do they want you to win? Do they really, really want you to win? Or do they feel like they would be less than if you did succeed? If you were growing, if you did get the right advice, do they feel like it might make them look bad or hold them back in some way? Do these people actually like you? Do these people actually want the best for you? Do not take advice from someone who doesn't. I kind of like the lines. It's aesthetic. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. That's all I got for y'all. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, then like it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.